Once upon a time, there was a storyteller. That was me. She had only just started working as a storyteller and she was very excited to get some of her first jobs. Um, and one of the very first jobs that she got was in a beautiful museum called Lord Layton's House. This is a true story, by the way. And the storyteller was shown up and, and the person who, who ran the house at the time was going, oh, and here's a picture here and here's a picture here. And see how beautiful everything is. And the storyteller was going, wow, I'm so excited about telling stories in this amazing place. And they went up to the very top room, which has got a piano in it. And it's this really big room. And there was the most beautiful picture that the storyteller had ever seen. It was of a woman with her arms open to the sun. And uh, the storyteller just looked at it. And the lady who ran the museum, she goes, uh, do you like that one? That was the one that he painted just before he died. In fact, he didn't even have time to finish it. It's Clytie. You can tell the story of Clytie if you like. And I thought to myself, oh yeah, I said, yeah, yeah. This is a true story about me. And I was like, oh yeah, of course I'll tell the story of Clytie. And I didn't know who Clytie was at all. But now I do, and I am going to share that story with you. It's a Greek myth. And you know, myths, they have the underworld, which is the world of the dead. And you have to cross over the river Styx to get there. And you have to pass Cerberus, the great three-headed and it's very cold down there. Very, very cold. And it's very, very dark. They don't need the lights. And it's very misty and indistinct. And everything down in the world of the dead is dead. I mean, some of it's quite pretty. King Hades, king of the dead, he's got this fantastic palace all made out of gold and silver and precious stones, but it's all dead. And it's very wet. They've got enormous lakes of water that are just spread out, that go on and on. A lot of water down there. And then if you go, um, if you go to the middle of the lakes, you see these great sort of tubes going up to the world above where people like us here, like, well, you know, alive people, bringing the water up. These are the wells, and they're almost like enormous trees under there. And the biggest well in the whole of the underworld was right next to the palace of King Hades. And in the bottom of it, in the darkest, coldest, bottomest bit, there were seven water nymphs. And the youngest was called Clytie. And all of the water nymphs used to swim around in the dead lakes, in the cold and the dark, picking up pieces of gold. I don't know if you like gold, if you're a fan of gold. I like, I like chocolate money, which is gold. Um, but, but they liked the real dead kind of gold and all the stones and things that have fallen off the palace of King Hades and collecting them. But Clytie, she wasn't interested in that. She liked to explore and swim as far as she could. And sometimes the whales have branches like trees so she could swim for ages and ages. And her sisters didn't like it when she wasn't back. And they'd go, Clytie, oh Clytie, you're going so far away. And Clytie would go, it's fun. And they'd go, no, you're going so far. What happens if you get lost? If you go too far away from us? You'll die! But Clytie loved exploring. And one day, she thought, I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm just going to swim up. So she started to swim up and up and up. This is an action. If you like actions, you can join in. Put your hands like this. She started to swim up and up and up. She never just swam up before and she looked up. up up and up. Of course it was all dark. Completely dark. She couldn't see anything. Up and up and up, just like always dark. Up and up and up 
and up. Oh my goodness. The water was changing. It wasn't dark like ink anymore. She could see there was a sort of translucent glow. Something was changing and she went up and up and it got brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter until she was just by the surface of the water. She just lifted up her nose and she took a tiny breath of air. The air which you and I breathe every day. And her lungs just went, and then she went, down and 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 down back to where her sisters were who had been collecting gold all day. And they said, oh, Clytie, you're back. Where have you been? Oh, you were so far away. Oh, we were so worried about you. Oh, Clytie, if you go too far from us, you'll die. And she said, no, I won't. What a lot of rubbish. I won't die. It was lovely. The air felt so good. I'm going to do it again. So she did it again. Get your hands. And she went up and 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 then water started getting translucent. Up and up and up and up and up and up and up. So she was right at the top of the water and then she stuck her head out. And she looked around. She was in a well, looking around. She was in a night orchard. There were trees with apples on. The moon was like a slice of peach in the sky. The sky itself was so blue, it was almost purple. And she could smell the smell of the grass. The gentle, warm night breeze, the twinkling of the stars. She could hear the sound of owls and nightjars. It was so, so beautiful. And she was warm as well. She just let her fingers feel the warm air and the breeze. And then she thought, I must have been gone for a really long time. I better go down. So she went back down, 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 and her sisters were there. Oh, they were crying like that. Oh, Clytie, oh, why have you been gone for so long? That's the worst thing. We were so. Ah! What's the matter? Said Clytie, and they went. Oh, your hair! It's got gritty things in it. What it had was seeds, little seeds that had blown in the night air and got stuck in her hair. She went, oh, it'll come out, it'll come out. And they said, never, 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 go too far from us or you will die. You will definitely, definitely die. So she didn't go the next day. She didn't go the next day. And then after a little while, she thought, I won't die. I didn't die, it was just the most beautiful thing ever. I'm gonna go again. So, up she went again. Up and up and up and up and up and up. up. Got to the surface, she broke through, and she climbed out, and she sat on the side of the well in the night forest. And then she swung her legs over from the wet side to the dry side and now they were touching the earth and touching the grass and she smelled all the lovely smells of the flowers and the grass and she could hear the whispering of the leaves and then the sky in the east started to change colour. First of all, it went pink, then it went gold, and then she saw Helios, the chariot of the sun, the chariot of Apollo, pulled by flaming horses. Apollo, of course, is the god 
of the sun, but not just the God of the sun. He's the God of health and of music and of art. And he was starting to drive his chariot up the sky. And Clytie looked, you know, you're not supposed to look straight at the sun, but she did, she couldn't help it. She just looked straight at the sun. She had never ever seen anything so beautiful or powerful in her whole life. And as the beams and rays came out of Apollo towards her, she just soaked them up. The warmth, the light, the health, the art, the music just pouring out of him. And she thought, may this never end. And he drove his chariot up higher and higher in the sky and she followed him with her head. Higher and higher until he was right at the top and all of that health and art and light and warmth was just pouring out of him onto her. And she thought, may this never end. As he started to drive down the sky and the sky came a little redder and he went down and down and still she was looking at him, soaking it all in, going, may this never end. Her eyes clutching at the rays of the sun, may this never end. Even as it was ending. Until it disappeared again. And it was starting to get dark again. Clytie thought, Now I have to go back to my sisters, back to the cold and the dark. And she went to swing her legs back over to the wet part of the well. But she couldn't. They were rooted in the good, rich earth. Clytie had been transformed. Her feet were roots. Her arms were leaves. Her face was flowers. And meanwhile, at the bottom of the well, in the pitch dark and the freezing cold, with all the dead things, were Clytie's sisters. And they were crying. Oh, 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 that was the saddest day. Clytie's cold, Clytie's cold. Oh, we told her. We told her. If you go too far from us, you'll die. And now she's done it, hasn't she? She's gone and she's gone too far from us. And now she's dead. But Clytie had never been more alive. She had transformed into sunflowers. Sunflowers. And you know what sunflowers do? They open their faces to the sun and they watch the sun as the sun moves across the sky their faces turn to follow. And that's what Clytie was doing. Spending all day, every day, soaking in all that warmth, that beauty, that life, that light, that art. And reflecting it back into the world above. And that is why they do say sunflowers are the most cheerful flowers. I hope you like my sunflower. I made it from a cornflakes packet. You can make your own if you want. And um, I hope you enjoyed that story and I'll see you next time for another one.